Hey there, welcome back. Alex Lyon here, and we are going to talk about theory as a practical approach to group communication. We are working out of Bibi and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So let's get into the details. So theories, both formal and informal, help us make intelligent decisions about how we act in groups. We use theories, for example, to regulate our own behavior. We behave consistently with our self-concept, which we mentioned in another video. And our actions are an outgrowth of how we think about groups generally, whether those thoughts are productive or not. So if you show up thinking a certain way about yourself and then thinking about groups in a certain way, you are going to then give off that vibe to the group. Let's say you're, oh, I hate working in groups and I'm no good at this makes me anxious, then that's the vibe you're gonna show up and give off. If, however, in contrast, you think, you know what, I'm okay at this and I see the value in working in groups, then you are going to come across in a whole different way. So those theories that we have, whether formal or informal, really do influence our actions. There are also two functions of theories. The first is explanatory. The theories then suggest practical ways that participants can make group work more efficient and rewarding. So the theories provide explanations for how we could participate. Theories help us explain, reason, and diagnose situations and make plans for appropriate participation, leadership, and solution. So if you understand groups in a certain way based upon theory and research, that helps you make plans and participate well and realize what the group may need and put those into practice accordingly because you have good, clear explanations of what will work and what won't work. The second function is the predictive function of theories. So research can tell us what we might expect as an outcome of our actions. We can select our approach to participation in a group and the group's direction in general based upon how we predict our actions will influence the outcomes. So theories say groups tend to have these kinds of outcomes when they do A, B, and C. And then you can realize, oh, well, if I want those good outcomes, then as a group, we should do A, B, and C because we could predict good outcomes as a result. Understanding the group processes suggests ways of improving the process. So you, based upon research and experience, you can make predictions about how much time you need and you can adjust those estimates, reasonable deadlines, and you can adjust those, the resources you need to plan for ahead of time, and how you might distribute the work among the group members because you would predict a certain outcome based upon research and past experience. So theories are really handy ways to approach groups, and that's why we're gonna look at a whole bunch of theories from this book, because it'll guide us to become more competent and effective group members. So question of the day, what is your opinion on this word theory? You think it's boring or exciting, or are you beginning to see the value in it? I would love to hear your comments in that section below the video. I know that when I hear the word theory, it sounds a little dry, but once I start reading one, I see myself in it. So that might, that would be my comment below that I might make. And I would love to hear your comments, your opinion on the word theories and what that actually represents. I look forward to reading those and take care and I'll see you soon.